thank you so much for watching. My name is Savannah. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. We are in Planet Zoo today, as you can see, but we're somewhere just a little bit different. Uh, today, as you might be able to tell, we are in Suyana Zoo, which is not actually my zoo project. Suyana Zoo belongs to Mr. Estan Wolf, who's also an amazing content creator and streamer. Um, and he was kind enough to let me build in the zoo for just a little bit. So that's what we're doing today. He kind of put it out there and said, if anybody wants to add anything new to Suyana, it's all yours, have at it. So after patiently, patiently waiting my turn and uh, spending some time building, this is what I came up with. So as you may or may not know, if you are or are not familiar with S. Dan's project, he has a little Pandora area uh, over off to the side. And in fact, actually, even though I follow his content and watch his streams, it took me about 15 minutes to even find the area that I was looking for. I knew it existed, uh, but the project is so incredibly large that it took me a while to find it. So once my uh, scavenger hunt was over and I located the area, he has this little already kind of Pandora themed area. Uh, area where he has made some floating rocks. He has the saltwater crocodiles over there. And so because um, I actually built this a really long time ago, um, I had problems getting into the zoo at first and it ended up being an issue on my end, not an issue on Planet Zoo or on Estan's end. Um, but I built this a while ago, kind of right after the aquatic pack came out. I hadn't yet built for the Caymans other than in Sakura Zoo when we did that saltwater crocodile came in uh, combination habitat. So I figured that because the Pandora area was right where Estan had his saltwater crocodiles, that the dwarf caimans would fit in really, really well. So the theme for this one was actually very, very easy. And as you can see, I'm building in a blank map. Um, and that's because originally when I wasn't able to get into the file um, that Estan sent me for Suyana, I was originally going to build it, save it as a habitat file, and then let him have it and let him install it. However, I tried again after figuring out my issue, so I was able to get uh, this build actually in Estan's zoo file. So at the very end, you'll see us jump into it a little bit, um, where I go ahead and, and we're actually in Suyana and we get to take some cinematics over there and, and it looks fabulous. It really does. It looks much better in the actual zoo than it does on a blank map. But what we've started on here is the outside uh, walk up area. So the Cayman habitat ends up being an indoor habitat, so a fully covered building. Um, and this is kind of the outside uh, walkway area. And I really took heavy inspiration from Animal Kingdom in Florida. So Disney's Animal Kingdom's a theme park and they obviously have the, uh, I forget what it's called, World of Pandora or something like that. They have Pandora Land basically um, and it's, it's absolutely beautiful. If you ever get the chance to go um, or are a huge uh, fan of the movie Avatar or just like the theming of Pandora itself. Um, and I also should have mentioned that I think in the very beginning, if you're not familiar with what Pandora is, it's the planet that the movie Avatar is based around. Um, so if you haven't seen that movie, that's kind of what we're talking about. So apologies if you've been confused up until now, but that's what we're doing. Um, so yeah, so it took heavy inspiration from Animal Kingdom's Pandora area, um, all the lighting, all the weird plants, all that. It's just so, so cool. Um, so I was pretty excited to kind of incorporate that. And Estan, like I said, had already done a little section of that. So when we go ahead and get to implement that into the zoo file, it looks a whole lot better because it kind of fits. He's got those floating rocks and the the um, all the lights and the mist and the fog and all that kind of stuff. It just kind of all comes together and it looks really, really good. So I took, like I said, heavy inspiration, but not exact copying. So I was kind of just winging it from here on out. Really the only thing that I had a clear vision on were these outside shade structure areas. Um, and then once we get to the inside of the building, it's kind of just, uh, 
my own guess, I guess, you know, just taking inspiration from what Pandora might actually look like and all the weird things that they have, like all the weird plants and lighting and stuff like that. In this build, we actually do implement some lighting. And lighting is not something that I build in a lot of my habitats or a lot of my zoos. So I was pretty proud of myself for actually getting some lighting, but I figured, you know, it's Pandora, you have to, you know, all the green and the purples and the blues and all the neon colors, um, you just kind of had to get the lighting in with this build. And as I mentioned before, the Caymans were a really easy pick for me as far as deciding what to build for. Um, one, they weren't an animal in Suyana, so that's what I was really trying to figure out what to do because he has a whole lot of animals in the zoo already and I wanted something new and different. Um, but also there, you know, when the, when the game, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the aquatic pack first came out, I kept saying the otters are my favorite. The otters are my favorite. They're so cute. The otters are my favorite, but the more that I get to playing with them, the more that I get to building for them, I actually think the dwarf caimans might be my favorite from the pack. I think their animations are super cute. I think the, um, textures on them, their little faces, their little leopard print texture on their faces, um, are just super super cool and I think actually personally reptiles are really cool in general. For those of you that don't know, I do work with animals and reptiles are one of my favorite animals to work with um, just because I find them fascinating. You know, they are a lot different from us as humans, just in the sense of obviously humans are mammals. And so we have a lot of uh, things kind of in common with other mammals, but reptiles are not. Reptiles are completely different from us. Um, first and foremost, one of the most obvious reasons in the fact that they are not uh, warm blooded or uh, they're considered to be ectothermic or cold blooded. Um, and I find that really, really cool. So if you don't know, um, an ectothermic Therm is any animal that's cold blooded, so it relies on the environment, so i.e., the sun, um, in order to keep its body warm. The term ectotherm actually comes from the Greek word uh, ektos, which means outside, and then thermos obviously means um, heat. So it just means that they get their heat from outside of their body. They don't have uh, the mechanisms, the internal processes that we have that keep our body warm, and they're not able to keep their body at a certain temperature without the use of the sun. Um, so I think that that is one of the, the coolest things about the reptiles, um, just in the sense of it, it means that their life uh, is a whole lot different from ours because it's dictated by where they can uh, get cool, where they can get warm and things like that. And then, you know, things like digesting their food and just their daily activity and all that kind of stuff is regulated uh, by temperature. They really are dependent on how warm or how cold they are. One thing that I find really, really fascinating about them, and this goes for a lot of different reptiles, is um, a lot of reptiles have uh, actually uh, depend on the temperature in order to determine the sex of their offspring. So depending on how cold or warm their eggs are when they're developing, it depends on, um, and I won't get too, too into it, but it gets uh, into uh, the different hormones that are um, created or the different hormones that are present during the embryo uh, development and depending on how hot or how cold kind of makes it so some of those hormones either do or or aren't produced and therefore you end up with either male or female offspring. Now the reason that I find this so cool and why it's so important is it actually plays a role into the conservation of these animals in the wild like a lot of um, crocodile species um, are having a hard time because with the increased temperatures I believe and don't quote me because I could be wrong. I think it is resulting in a um, increased uh, production of females. I think it is. I think females are uh, produced at warmer temperatures. But again, let me know down in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, but it's one or the other. It's either male or females that are produced at warmer. And then um, sometimes it depends if it's warm when they're first laid and then cold in the middle and then warm back when they're, you know, different variations of temperature. But you guys get the point. Anyway, so that's what's most important uh, or why I find it most interesting is because these guys actually really rely on their environment and things like global warming and the changing of the temperature uh, all around us is affecting these animals in ways that you might not uh, really know about just kind of thinking about it off the top of your head. So I find that really, really interesting, but all the more reason why we should do uh, everything we can in order to protect the animals and protect the environment and kind of help reverse uh, what is happening there. 
But anyway, that's just kind of why I find them so cool. They're cool for a, a multitude of other reasons. Um, just like I said, their looks and, and um, how cute they are in game. I just love building for them now. So this will actually be, I think, the third time uh, I've built a habitat for them. Yeah, because they're in Sakura Zoo. They're in our franchise zoo in Tali Zoo. And then they are in Estan's uh, Sakura. Um, Suyana. Sakura and Suyana are really similar, so I kind of get them mixed up when I'm uh, talking about them. But we are nearing the end of the outside of the build. Um, I do add a lot more plants. Um, you can see there I cut and I built these little plants with those fake recolorable tree branches that we got with the aquatic pack, which I didn't actually think I would ever use. Uh, and they were perfect. They were, they were perfect for this build, so I'm, I'm glad I found a useful them and then as well as those big purple flowers I totally forget what they're called um, they look really tropical and jungly um, but those ones I didn't think I would ever use either so this was definitely a build for me where I was kind of trying to go outside of my normal outside of my you know super modern or uh, in Tali Zoo we're, we're building a lot of tropical stuff um, but yeah go a little bit outside my comfort zone channel a little bit of my inner Estan and kind of use the pieces and things like that that I don't normally use on an everyday basis. So overall, I'm really, really happy with how all these plants came out. Um, it's a huge mixture of a whole bunch of different stuff from different biomes and things like that, but the colors and just kind of like, I used like the succulent uh, cactus plants because they just kind of look, I keep wanting to say alien. They look alien, but I, you know, Pandora and, and Avatar is not necessarily an alien movie, I guess. I, at least I don't consider it to be an alien movie. Um, but you know, otherworldly, I guess. There you go. Um, so just by taking a few of the plants and like this one, just using the top of it. So, you know, sinking it down and, and I'm talking about the ones with the white flowers kind of all over and then the yellows and the reds and the pinks and the greens, it kind of all just comes uh, comes together. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it overall. And then when we get it into the zoo file over in Suyana, um, I kind of extend that and we make like a little walkway in front. Um, um, that does actually come out pretty, pretty stinking cool. While we're finishing up the outside and then moving on to the inside here uh, shortly, I did want to take a moment and thank you guys for all of you guys that have been stopping by my streams every other uh, Sunday. And I can say streams now, plural, because we've done two. <laughs> uh, we're pro professional streamers now at two full streams. But anyway, I wanted to thank you guys for stopping by and showing the love and, and chatting with me and hanging out. It's been an absolute blast and something that I do 100% percent want to continue in the future, if not even increase our streaming days. So right now, um, if you're not aware, we're streaming every other Sunday. This video comes out on the 14th. The next stream will then be on the 21st because every opposite Sunday is a Planet Zoo video. And then the you know opposite Sunday from that is a stream. And we stream eight in the morning to 10 in the morning Pacific Standard Time because I'm based in San Diego. Um, so yeah, so if you guys wanna stop by and say hi, I always appreciate it. It's great to talk to you guys. But in addition, I've been getting a lot of questions recently um, about how to do this. Do you have a tutorial on that? You know, I'm having struggles doing this in Planet Zoo. Now, my first recommendation for you guys is always that there are some wonderful content creators that have made some really amazing tutorials. Uh, the two that come to mind, the ones that have helped me the most are both the Lady Designer and Palsley. They've made wonderful detailed um, tutorials that are super, super helpful. Um, so I would always suggest starting there. I do have plans for a couple tutorials in the future, but it is something totally brand new to me. So I'm kind of just taking my time and making sure they come out right before I release anything or film anything. Cause right now they are just ideas on paper. I haven't actually done any concrete work to make them happen. Uh, but if you guys ever have very simple questions or just quick questions that you want help with, feel free to stop by in my streams. I would be 
happy to help you guys um, with anything that you may be struggling with. Now, I'm not going to be able to stop and do like a, how do you put down pathing? Um, because I, I won't be able to take the time and kind of explain every step of the way, but you can ask, you know, I can't delete pathing. How do you quickly delete pathing? And I can, I can go ahead and show you guys that real quick. Um, because I'm always, always up for helping you guys, um, because I'm definitely still learning and, and I learn a lot from other people's streams as well. Um, the example that comes to mind is I was watching, um, Dutch Lion over on Twitch and he has a, a wonderful little series going right now in Planet Zoo. And I try to catch it when I can, cause we're on such opposite, uh, schedules of the world. So he's normally streaming, um, when I'm asleep, but I do try to catch it, uh, frequently. And it was from his stream that I learned that you could press space bar to toggle on and off the angle snap. Um, so I definitely think that learning from other creators is super, super helpful. So I am happy to do that if you guys want to stop by the stream. If you don't have anything to ask or don't want uh, to learn anything, I guess you're still welcome to stop by and hang out. Um, again, we stream on every other Sunday, eight to 10. So be really cool to see you there. So because I built this so long ago, I actually forgot how long it took me to get to the interior. So hopefully we'll get to the interior soon um, and then go ahead and get this over into the zoo file. But while we are uh, looking at the rest of the build, um, the last little announcement that I had for you guys is that we do have a Discord community build contest going on right now. And it is based off of the shell build challenge that is still being released every few days um, tomorrow, actually the same day that this video comes out, there should be another one, um, over on Leaf's channel, I believe, Leaf Productions. Um, but anyway, so the, the contest is based on that. And basically you have to take my shell and create a habitat off of it using any scenery pieces, build items or construction pieces that you want. Um, and you can't change things like the pathing, the barrier, the terrain, stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, there is a link down below to the discord. If you want to join, I would love to have you guys there. I've already gotten a handful of entries and the due date is on the 26th. So there's just about uh, two weeks left and um, the builds are always amazing. It's super, super inspiring for me to see what you guys um, have done because I always find new things that I would have never thought of uh, before. Or even if you're not interested in the contest, you can still come on over to the Discord and hang out with us, chat, share pictures of your builds, ask questions, hang out, make friends, whatever you want to do. It's a really cool place uh, for the community to kind of get together. And I've really been enjoying it. We've gotten a lot of new members recently, and um, it's always nice to meet people in the community that have similar interests to you. So we are finally getting into the interior of the build, finally, and this was probably the most difficult part. Not really for what I'm building here, but when I was building this again, if you remember, I was kind of anticipating giving this to Estan as a habitat build and letting him kind of mess with it to get it installed in Suyana. Um, and it didn't end up working out that way. It worked out for the better because I was able to install the habitat myself and make it uh, kind of fit in and cohesive with the area and do this little walk up area that you'll see in a little bit. Um, but that meant that I spent a lot of time doing the water here and doing a lot of the terrain and all that kind of stuff. And it copies over kind of um, copying over habitats by like surrounding something with a barrier and saving it as a habitat blueprint works to an extent, um, but it doesn't save any of the barriers. It doesn't save any of the pathing. And then the terrain's a little wonky um, when you go to transfer that over. So um, a lot of this uh, ends up being almost exactly the same in the final build when I move it over. But again, that's just because it was a little wonky. But in here, um, it is a small space. It's probably a little bit smaller than the Caymans really need for the game, um, like for what their welfare needs are in game. But the Cayman are such a small species and a lot of zoos have very small, um, appropriately sized, but much smaller uh, enclosures than we see in the game. So that's kind of what I was trying to go off of, um, somewhere that the guests can come in, get a real close look at these animals. Um, and then I think I end up putting only one or maybe two in the final thing. And they have like just a little bit too 
um, small of an area for what the game wants. Um, but they have two little swimming pools here and I surround them by rocks and put the drains in the bottom so they do look somewhat realistic. Um, and then lots and lots of plants. Now, because we're building in a uh, Pandora themed area, the plants don't really match with what the animals would want in game, but that's okay because this is kind of, you know, we are, we're fitting a theme, we're building a certain area. Um, and so I was okay with that. Um, so we do add kind of the similar plants that are outside, um, inside, and that way it still kind of continues the theme, continues the look onto the inside. Um, and of course for the rocks, I'm choosing these flexi colored rocks because I don't know how I ever built anything without them. Um, they are just, in my opinion, the best thing ever since sliced bread. Uh, and I use them basically in, in every build now. And actually one of my newest favorite things to do, I think I mentioned, mentioned this in the franchise zoo, is to mix them with the natural rocks. I don't do that here. I use just the uh, just the fake rocks, just the flexi colored rocks, but mixing them in with the natural rocks uh, gives a really cool mixture of texture um, and things like that. So with that, I don't really have anything else for you guys. I'm gonna let you guys enjoy the last little bits of the video. Uh, there should be about 10 minutes or so left. We'll go ahead and get this, this habitat over into Suyana, and there are some beautiful cinematics at the end. Uh, like I mentioned before, I did actually do lighting in this build. So there is some, um, there are some shots of the lighting in the cinematics at the very, very end. Um, let me know what you think of the habitat down down below. Uh, let me know if you would have done anything differently or any suggestions for the future comments, feedback, always welcome down in the comment section. And then as always, if you do enjoy the content, it really does help out to leave a like uh, or to even leave a comment and let me know because that's kind of how I gauge what you guys are enjoying for the future, but also just does help me grow the channel in general. So thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will talk at you guys in the next one. Thanks. Bye.
Hum.